Imagine A small and very picturesque village in the Philippines called Puerto Galera is located on Mindoro Island. To get there from Manila, it is a two-hour drive followed by another hour by water taxi to cross over the ocean from one island to another. Our trip was organized by the Aquarius Diving Center from Toronto, and we stayed at the Atlantis Dive Resort. For the record, the resort, management, and staff were fantastic, and everybody was trying to make our stay flawless and 100% enjoyable. During our week's day, we have been dived three to four times a day. All of the diving sites are very close to the resorts, and honestly, there is no need to go any farther than a two to 10 minutes boat ride to enjoy spectacular dives. The type of dive one we could brag about for many years to come. Just around the corner, like five minutes from the resort, reefs are very healthy and just majestic. The combination of colors and surfaces are not from this world. Compared to many other places I have had a chance to dive at, the reef and the sea life are here like on steroids. I know this looks like another aquarium movie, but believe me, it is the giant aquarium just more significant and better than any artificial in the world. If you are watching this movie, please take a moment and enjoy the incredible biodiversity. Each moment is precious, and for a diver who can appreciate it, places like this are just priceless. Isn't that spectacular? The colony of the blue fish contrasted with the brown coral. Which artist would come up with such an idea? Be ready for it. The abundance of all kinds of fish, corals, sponges, and colors. For divers who have never had a chance to dive in that part of the world, it is a jaw-dropping experience. Clownfish are everywhere here, but what amazes me are the different shapes and colors. It is such enjoyment to watch clownfish gently touching the host sea in Amity, which is a sweet home for the whole family. This funny fish uses the protection of the poisonous in Amity to hide from hunters when needed. Always hungry, filtering thousands of gallons of water to catch enough protein to support the existence. Looks beautiful, but this is a fight for survival. Isn't this soft coral look like a meadow with flowers in the springtime? Ocean current brings food. Where there is current, there is life. Where there is no current, there is no life. We usually see a greater concentration of small and often bigger fish where there is a current. Not only fish catch food in the current, the waste family of soft corals, feather stars, and many other species also feed on tiny plankton and need the current to bring it to them. If you pay attention, plankton is everywhere. But truly giant fish seldom venture close to shore reefs. Instead, they prefer the open ocean with some underwater pinnacles, with a lot of currents.
hunting for a pygmy seahorse is challenging. This tiny creature was first discovered by a scientist in 1969. This is everybody's favorite horse, but I can take a bet on the horse that only a few of us can spot it. This is such a tiny creature that a magnifying glass is almost a must. The moor eel is always on the lookout for a meal. They usually have a perfect vantage point to observe their whole surrounding with no destruction. They do not cause danger to the divers, but only if we as divers will respect the distance. New to branches come in small and larger sizes, but are always spectacular looking creatures. Nudies have few predators and are at risk only from other new to branches, turtles, some crabs and humans. The master of camouflage is the octopus. It is very difficult to spot one in the daylight as they prefer to hunt at night. For me, this is one of my favorite creatures to observe. The electric file clam is a hard creature to spot, but if found, it will provide a truly unique and electrifying show with fireworks and a display of visual charges that look like lighting. Another lionfish is on the lookout for an easy meal. Thousands of baby fish makes for a healthy ecosystem. The Philippines and Indonesia are well known for the presence of nuda branches. In my opinion, those slugs are like pieces of art, like jewelry of the ocean. Why and for what reason did the creator or evolution make them so beautiful? I don't know the answer. I just love to watch them under the water. The banded pipefish usually forms a union, which lasts for a long time. The mini frogfish is doing the baby steps here. Small fish, small steps. The frogfish doing baby steps. 
This type of fish looks more like a clown than a natural clownfish does. This is one of the many kinds of lionfish, always hungry and hunting for small reef fish. Thankfully, the population of lionfish is well under control in the area because other fish hunt the lionfish as if it were a safari. I must admit that the reef in the port is a bit damaged, but this is something to expect in places like that. On the plus side, a few sunken shipwrecks have happened there and it creates different and fascinating dive sites. One of the diving sites was just at the front of the resorts, in the port area. A small, approximately third of out long wreck was a base for the fantastic sea life. Some of the fish here, I have never seen before. But this is good news because, here there are so many things yet to discover. Large scorpion fish is rushing to take cover. This ambush predator seldom can be spotted in the open space like it is here. This is one of the species which rely on camouflage for hunting. Usually is blending very well with the background and they are hard to be spotted by divers. Another lionfish is on the lookout for an easy meal. The group of damselfishes spends most of their life using coral reefs like staghorn or similar as protection and to provide a sense of home. They live in large groups and move with excellent coordination. This tomato clownfish has so much plankton at the doorstep, like being delivered with Uberit. This is a razor fish, also called shrimp fish. The shrimp fish maintains a vertical orientation with the head pointed downward. This posture is maintained by using the beating fins as the position of the center of buoyancy which nearly corresponds to the center of mass. This position allows this fish to better maneuver between reefs. Another new to branches, to me, looks like Romeo and Juliet. The red spot next to the sea in Emity is worth paying attention to. Those are raw of the clownfish, so close to the sea in Emity to form a natural protection from potential predators. It is impossible to describe such a fantastic moment. I wish you were here. Juvenile sweet lips are fascinating to watch. It swims so funnily that it instantly gets everybody's attention. One day, this small fish will have the amazing sweet lips. Lips like Angelina.
puffer fish is always adorable. Few predators would like to challenge this fish. Poisonous spikes are all over its body and are not to be ignored. But this fish has such sweet eyes. Isn't the coordinated swim of juvenile sea bass mesmerizing? This new to branch perfectly blends with the habitat it lives in. Same colors, similar pattern. Another spectacular piece of jewelry. Isn't this slug is a winner? But why is called Funeral Jorana? Sponges compete with corals for space to grow. When sponges are abundant, the stable state of coral-dominated reefs may be compromised. They look lovely in the pictures, but compete for food and space. Hermit crabs always blends with the surrounding area. Their choice of housing can be astonishing. Giant sponge barrels are impressive. Do you wonder how many years it needs to be bigger than adult humans? Over 100 years, and it can life over 2,000 years. Isn't that something? This fish likes to take a sweet time to rest. On top of the mountain with a fantastic vantage point. This fish looks relaxed and happy. Christmas tree worms are named for their spindly, fur tree-like appearance. Christmas tree worms are ciliary feeders, which means they use cilia, tiny hair-like bristles on their appendages, to catch food as it passes by. This octopus puts an amazing show. The color adaptation is not from this world. Such a close resemblance of the reef next to it. Crown of thorns are one of the biggest threats to the coral reefs. If not controlled, they can easily damage waste areas of the reefs. The natural reef's defender, in this case, is Pacific Triton a giant sea snail that hunts it by injecting venom.
Plankton fuels the life in the ocean because it is at the beginning of the food chain. Plankton is marine drifters carried along by tides and currents. The word plankton comes from the Greek for drifter or wanderer. An organism is considered plankton if tides and currents carry it. an essential role in the marine ecosystem. These plant-looking invertebrates serve as homes to numerous sea creatures, such as cleaner shrimps and even clownfish like Disney's Nemo. Despite looking like beautiful flowers that lie below the tides, however, sea aemons are quite fearsome predators. Seven surprising facts about coral. Corals are animals. Corals can be fluorescent. Corals eat plankton and small fish. There are hundreds of coral species of all colors, shapes, and size. Corals can move. Corals support 25% of ocean life. Climate change is the biggest threat to corals. And they are beautiful. This village is worth exploring. The local people are amicable and walking at night is safe. However, life is not easy here. Very few well-paid jobs are available and trying to provide support for the family is challenging. I remember when I was precisely in that same place in 2008. I could make only one dive because our journey had different agendas. I told myself then, I have to be back, and I'm glad I did. The Philippines is one of the best diving destinations in the world. This nation is spread over thousands of big and small islands, each with its own characteristics, and each is worthy to be explored. This was my third trip to this fantastic diving destination and I know that for sure, it was not the last one.